Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good day to everyone. So today I'm going to explain on chapter 2, cellular respiration. Uh, my name is Madam Siti Haja Binti Noor Ashuddin. And for this uh, lecture, I will explain uh, this pyruvate oxidation and the aerobic respiration, which is the continuous from what Madam Yanti have left uh, in her previous lecture. So let's begin. So before we start with the uh, pyruvate oxidation topic, so let's do some recap on uh, glycolysis process. Okay, so what are the uh, things that uh, you need to know uh, to describe uh, the process of glycolysis? First, you need to know how to define glycolysis. The definition of glycolysis is the process of breaking down one molecule of glucose to produce two molecules of pyruvate. Next, you need to know the steps involved in glycolysis. So it is involved 10 steps, includes the using of energy, producing the energy, on oxidation and reduction, uh, with the help of 10 specific enzymes. I'm sure Medanyanti have um, briefly explained all these 10 steps. All right, so the next thing is you need to know the phases involved in glycolysis. So there are two phases involved, which is the investment phase and the payoff phase. The place and the condition for the glycolysis to occur. So glycolysis takes place in the cytoplasms and the condition for the glycolysis to occur, it does not require oxygen. Okay, which means if there is oxygen is present or absent, glycolysis still can happen. And last but not least, the net gain produced in the glycolysis. So what are the main products produced? Two molecules of pyruvate, two molecules of NADH, and two molecules of ATP. So basically, these are all the description on the process of glycolysis. So I'm going to explain where uh, what happened to the pyruvate after glycolysis. So as you can see here, this is the process of glycolysis where the glucose is already converted into pyruvate. So what happened to this pyruvate? So there are two conditions here. If there is no oxygen in the cell, the pyruvate will continue with the fermentation, either to produce ethanol or producing the lactate. Okay, if there is oxygen present, the pyruvate will undergo aerobic cellular respiration by entering the mitochondria and proceed with the process citric acid cycle. But before they uh, proceed with the citric acid cycle, pyruvate must be converted into acetylcoephase. So this is basically the, the pyruvate oxidation process. So there are three phases of pyruvate after glycolysis. As I mentioned earlier, if there is no oxygen, so the pyruvate will undergo fermentation, which is the anaerobic cellular respiration. As you can see here in the tab purple table here on the left side, so this is a process of lactic acid fermentation where this pyruvate will produce a lactic. Okay, and this occur inside the animal cell. While the green table here, is on the right side okay so this is an alcoholic fermentation process where this pyruvate will convert it or uh, producing the ethanol okay and this process occur inside the plant cell but both of these i'm not going to further explain on this part because this will be uh, uh, explained by miss sarah in the next video all right so here i would I will uh, explain more on the aerobic res uh, oxidation of the spermate. So what happened if there is oxygen, okay, in the condition uh, having uh, oxygen is present, so pyruvate must be converted into acetic OA. Okay, then this acetic OA proceed to continue with the citric acid cycle. So basically, with the presence of oxygen, Okay, after glycolysis, glucose converted into pyruvate. When the oxygen is present in the cell, 
the pyruvate must enter the mitochondria where this oscillation of glucose will be completed. But before entering the citric acid cycle, there is a process called pyruvate oscillation where this pyruvate must be converted into acetyl-CoA and this is known as link reaction. Okay, so what is link reaction? Right, before the citric acid cycle begins, pyruvate must be converted into acetyl-CoA A or known as acetyl-CoA. It is a link between the glycolysis with the citric acid cycle. It's not a main stages, but it is a link between glycolysis and PrEP cycle or citric acid cycle. It is also known as pyruvate oxidation or the transition stage. So there are three steps involved in this link reaction, where the first step is decarboxylation. Okay, decarboxylation. What do you what do you know about decarboxylation? Decarboxylation means you are remove the reaction are removing the carbon. As you can see here, pyruvate having a three carbon compound. Okay, after removing the carbon, it produces an acetate with two carbon compound. Okay, so the two carbon compound here, you can see the number of carbon is reduced. Okay, it's become less. So one carbon has been removed from pyruvate and forming acetate. But how they remove the carbon? They remove the carbon by releasing carbon dioxide. So the enzyme that helps this reaction is known as decarboxylase. So this is the first steps of link reaction. The second step is oxidation. So the pyruvate will oxidize together with the decarboxylation just now to, to produce or to form the acetate. So means that pyruvate are losing electron. So there is an electron carrier that will receive the electron and reduce to form uh, uh, NADH. All right, so NAD plus will reduce to form NADH. And this reaction is helped or catalyzed by the name of enzyme pyruvate dehydrogenase. Last but not least, okay, the third steps of link reaction is the addition or the combination with the coenzyme A. As you can see here, acetate, okay, after combined with the coenzyme A, it will form acetyl coenzyme A. So you need to adding the coenzyme A into the reaction so then this acetyl CoA become more active and ready to start the Krebs cycle or the citric acid cycle. And these are the reaction, okay? Uh, I think you can see the next slide, okay? But before that, I would like to uh, make a reminder for you. So in glycolysis, you have two molecules of pyruvate being produced. So both of these pyruvate must undergo the same pathway, which is the link reaction. So then later we can see how many, um, uh, what are the products and how many uh, the products have been produced. Okay, with the presence of oxygen, after pyruvate entering the mitochondria, remember there are three steps. The first step is decarboxylation. So decarboxylation, removing the carbon by releasing the carbon dioxide. What, are, what is the enzyme that help or catalyze this reaction? Decarboxylase. The second step is oxidation. Pyruvate is being oxidized to form acetyl-CoA. Okay, as they oxidize, losing the electron, so NAD plus receiving the electron and reduce to form NADH. What is the enzyme that catalyzes this reaction? Okay, it is pyruvate dehydrogenase. And last step, remember you need to adding the coenzyme A into the reaction, then you can produce the final product of link reaction, which is acetyl CoA. So I would like to ask you. So the next part is the summary part. So later I will ask you how many acetyl CoA will be produced. Okay. So the summary here telling you that it is. Uh, pyruvate oxidation is requiring oxygen so that we call this process as aerobic respiration. This limitation reaction occurs between glycolysis and citric acid cycle. And what are the 
product. Eh? This reaction will give off two molecules of acetico A, two molecules of NADH, and two molecules of carbon dioxide. Why there are two molecules of acetico A? Remember, you have two molecules of pyruvate from glycolysis. Alright, so I will stop my lecture until here and we'll continue with the explanation of citric acid cycle in the next video. Stay tuned guys. Bye.